is La Paz, Bolivia. At almost 3,700 meters, it's the highest capital city in the world. It also holds the more dubious honor of marking one end of the most dangerous road on the planet. And that's why I was here. First thing I noticed is the way the altitude just smacks you in the chest. As soon as they open those aircraft doors, it was like somebody giving me a great big punch. And to be honest, every single movement is an effort. I hope I get used to it soon, because at the moment, I'm feeling terrible. Altitude sickness is just one of the problems that I faced. El Camino de Muerte, the death road, claims the lives of around 100 people every year. It clings precariously to the mountainside between La Paz and the town of Caroico in the thick jungle of the Yungas. The next day, I was woken by the sound of dancing in the streets, a promising start to my Bolivian adventure, and a charming traditional soundtrack as I headed out of La Paz. In a country where ancient trucks and overloaded microbuses are the normal form of transport, my supercharged Range Rover Sport was pretty conspicuous as I left the city. With the prospect of a 70 km drive on a narrow track, with sheer drops of over a thousand meters and not a crash barrier in sight, it was reassuring to be behind the wheel of a car with impeccable credentials. But even Land Rover's legendary ability might not be enough to see me through, warned my guide Hugo. An experienced mountain climber, Hugo recommended we sort out a sorcerer. Yeah, we, we need to, to bless our car, you know, to go down on this road. You know, because it's, it's the death road, you know. It's, we need all the help that we can. <laughs> Esteban, the sorcerer, then conducted a bizarre ritual to bless my journey. He prepared effigies of cars and trucks and a horrific looking desiccated chicken. He asked me to sprinkle coca leaves on this peculiar pile. Then he built a fire and burnt the lot. Then he broke out the beer, advising me to get drunk before attempting the crossing. Funnily enough, I declined and we sprayed it around the fire instead. I headed off. A few dollars lighter, but with the gods on my side. It wasn't long before progress was halted by a huge rockfall. And judging by the equipment being used to clear it, the road was going to be blocked for some time. Eventually, they let me through, but just a few miles up the road, another huge landslide blocked my path. I hardly dared think what would have happened if I'd arrived just a few minutes earlier. Maybe the sorcerer had done his job after all. This time, the equipment was rather more impressive, and the road crew soon had the way clear. Progress is slow on the world's most dangerous road, there are landslides and continuous roadworks to deal with. The dirt road is frequently rutted or caked in mud and the Range Rover's terrain response system got a serious workout. There's also a tremendous amount of traffic. Trucks carrying produce from the lush youngers to the capital and hastily driven microbuses ferrying people drive with complete indifference to the road's reputation. The track is narrow, and passing requires a great deal of skill and cooperation between drivers. It's not surprising that accidents happen. The drops are terrifying. A minor misjudgment and I'd be lost in the jungle hundreds of meters below. Memorials to those who have lost their lives are everywhere. Well here there was an accident. Yeah? And probably you know a truck or a bus you know friend of come here, I will show you the key. One man trying to reduce the death toll is Timoteo. In 1978, he lost his family on this stretch of the road when their bus went over the edge. Since then, he's dedicated himself to saving lives by acting as a kind of human traffic light. 
He's here every day in all weathers, surviving on tips from grateful drivers. With Timoteo's help, I got past the most treacherous section of the road and completed my journey, and finally conquered the world's most dangerous road. <laughs> 